Although having existed for over 25 years, the Toronto Raptors are one of the youngest NBA teams. Despite their relative short existence compared to other NBA franchises, the team has experienced a uniquely colorful past, including battles for ownership and even fights over who gets to play in whose arena. This is a super quick history of the Toronto Raptors. Before we get started, I just want to say welcome to All Sports History. This is a channel where you'll find many sports documentaries on sports leagues like the NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, and much more. So please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you don't want to miss any of those. Okay, let's get back to today's video. The Raptors were formed in 1993 as an expansion team and the 28th franchise of the NBA for what was at the time a record $125 million expansion fee. The team would be joined by another Canadian expansion franchise, the Vancouver Grizzlies. The Raptors ownership group was comprised of several individuals. The most prominent were former basketball player Isaiah Thomas, who owned a small share, and the two majority owners were businessman Alan Slate and John Biteau Jr., seen here in an intimate moment with the Raptors logo. You might think it's weird, but this guy was loving it. With the ownership in place and the expansion granted by the NBA, the Raptors would bring a return of pro basketball to Toronto for the first time in 48 years. The previous basketball team, the Toronto Huskies, folded in 1947 due to low attendance and a poor record of 22 wins and 38 losses. The Raptors' name came as a result of a nationwide contest. 2,000 entries were submitted and a short list of about 10 names were considered. Some of those were the Dragons, Scorpions, and Hogs. Hogs was considered because the nickname for the city of Toronto is Hogtown, mainly because at one point they were home to the largest pork processing company in the British Empire. But honestly, we don't really need to get into that right now. The Raptors name was selected due in part of its uniqueness, but also due to the popularity of the movie Jurassic Park at the time. The team chose the colors purple, red, silver, and black. Silver was chosen in honor of Canadian James Naismith, the inventor of basketball, seen here picking basketballs from his favorite basketball tree. Now, it was difficult tracking down the reason why silver was chosen in honor of James Naismith, but I believe it had something to do with Canada winning the silver medal in basketball in the 1936 Olympics. Naismith himself personally handed out the winning medals to each nation, but if you happen to be a basketball historian or just a James Naismith enthusiast and know the real answer, please don't hesitate, leave a comment below, I'd like to know. During the 1995 expansion draft, the Raptors used their first ever franchise selection to pick three-time champion BJ Armstrong. However, Armstrong refused to report the training camp and the team was forced to trade him to the Golden State Warriors. In fact, of all the players drafted by the team that year, only three players would end up playing more than one season with the Raptors. As with most expansion teams, the early years were full of struggles. The team never managed to finish better than last place in their division during their first three seasons. Before the start of their first season in 1995, the Raptors were looking for a temporary arena to play in until a permanent one could be built. Owner John Beethoven contacted the owners of the Maple Leafs, who were playing at the aging Maple Leafs Gardens Arena, to see if the Raptors could play there in the meantime, and they said, No. You see, a few years earlier, the ownership of the Maple Leafs, known at the time as Maple Leafs Garden Limited, or MLGL, they had wanted to start an NBA franchise in Toronto and made an official bid to the NBA. However, John Beethoven and Alan Slate's group were picked over the Maple Leafs group, so MLGL lost out on their chance to own an NBA franchise. Now, flashing forward a couple of years, when it came time for the Raptors to find a temporary home before their arena could be built, MLGL had no real desire to help out the Raptors. This forced the Raptors into a difficult situation, and they settled on playing their home games at the Sky Dome, now known as the Rogers Center. Although the Sky Dome was built as a multi-purpose stadium, mainly for baseball and football, no, not that kind of football, yes, this kind of football, the stadium wasn't really designed for basketball, creating cavernous viewing experiences for the fans. But the Raptors made do in the meantime and played there for four seasons, from 1995 to 1999. During this time, the owners got to work on plans for a new arena that would be built in downtown Toronto. The two majority owners, John Beethoven and Alan Slate, quickly came to a disagreement about the financing of the arena. 
Slate wanted to partner with the Maple Leafs, who were also looking to build a new arena, while Batov, who was not too happy about MLGL refusing to let them play at their place, felt that the Raptors should go alone on the deal. Slate thought that it would be financial suicide to build a basketball-only arena, and so a standoff between the two majority owners ensued. The ownership agreement between the partners had a shotgun clause that essentially meant that if the owners disagreed about the future direction of the club, one owner could buy out the other within 60 days. This type of deal typically favored the shareholder with more cash on hand than the other, and in this case that shareholder was Slate. By the end of 1996, Alan Slate had bought out John Beto's ownership and gained nearly 80% control over the Raptors. Seeing an opportunity arise, MLGL came back into the picture and made a deal with Slate to take over 100% ownership of the Raptors and the new arena. With the deal completed, MLGL changed their name to Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. They now had what they originally wanted all along, which was ownership of an NBA team in Toronto. With the dust settling on the ownership shakeups, plans for a new arena could move forward. The Raptors' fortunes would soon change. During the 1998 draft, Toronto traded their fourth pick to the Golden State Warriors for the fifth pick, and they acquired star Vince Carter. He would end up winning Rookie of the Year and would become a fan favorite for showcasing his incredible dunking skills. On February 19, 1999, the Air Canada Centre was open, becoming the new home to the Raptors and the Toronto Maple Leafs. The arena would eventually change its name to Scotiabank Arena in 2018. After winning 47 games in the 2000-2001 season, the Raptors clinched a spot in the playoffs, playing the New York Knicks in the first round. They would go on to win their first ever playoff series by beating the Knicks in five games. Unfortunately, the Raptors would fall short of the NBA Finals by one game after losing in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals to the Philadelphia 76ers. Due to the financial struggles stemming from the 1998 lockout and the poor attendance that followed, the Vancouver Grizzlies packed up and moved to Memphis, Tennessee starting in the 2001-2002 season. This left the Raptors as the only Canadian NBA team. What had begun as a promising start to the Vince Carter era quickly started to fade. Injuries piled up with key players who missed large parts of the 2002-2003 season. The Raptors actually set a record for not being able to man a full roster of players. After the miserable season, the Raptors regrouped and selected Chris Bosch in the 2003 draft. The team hoped that Bosch might develop into a centerpiece player to build around. A frustrated Vince Carter was traded in 2004 to the New Jersey Nets for a couple of draft picks and several players, including Alonzo Mourning. The trade ended up being lopsided, as most of the players the Raptors received never ended up leading to any success. Alonzo Mourning actually refused to show up to play for Toronto, so the team had no choice but to release him. But hey, that's what happens when you don't show up to work, am I right? The next 15 years would bring many tantalizingly close to championship seasons, while also bringing many disappointing ones. Despite attempting to build through the draft, the Raptors' struggles continued throughout the mid-2000s. A low point came in early 2006, when after blowing an 18-point lead to the Los Angeles Lakers, Kobe Bryant single-handedly scored 81 points, putting up one of the highest single-game totals in NBA history. By the start of the 2007 season, Chris Bosh had risen to become the team's leader and the face of the organization. He helped lead the Raptors to clinch a playoff spot against the New Jersey Nets. However, Vince Carter would come back to haunt the Raptors in the series. Despite winning the first game, which was the first playoff win for the Raptors in five years, the Nets would end up winning the series in six games. The next season, the Raptors would return to the playoffs and once again lose in the first round to the Orlando Magic. Before the 2009 and 2010 season, the Raptors made a series of roster moves in order to shake up the team. One notable addition was of DeMar DeRozan, who was drafted as the ninth overall pick in 2009. With Chris Bosh about to hit free agency, the general manager, Brian Colangelo, hoped to make enough changes to convince Bosch to stay for the foreseeable future. Those hopes would be shattered, however. On July 7, 2010, Chris Bosch announced that he was leaving Toronto for the Miami Heat to join his friend Dwayne Wade. The very next day on live TV, LeBron James announced his decision to leave Cleveland and join the Heat as well. The super team trio of Bosch, Wade, and James will go on to win back-to-back -back championships in 2012 and 2013. 
With Vince Carter gone and now Bosch, and the team's continued inability to attract talented free agents, the Raptors were left figuratively at a crossroads as an organization. It was time to go back to the drawing board and ask themselves, what kind of basketball club do we want to be? And where do we go from here? By 2013, the organization was looking to reset the culture around the club. The team hired the creative agency, Sid Lee, to create a slogan that would showcase the team's identity and their loyal fan base. The phrase, We the North, was born and has gone on to become extremely popular amongst their fans. A part of the culture reset was hiring a new GM, Masai Ujuri, who immediately set out to reshape the roster through releasing several players and trades. The first season under Ujuri started out pretty rough only winning six of the first 18 games. However, after a midseason trade with the Sacramento Kings, the team turned things around and ended up finishing the season with a franchise best 48 wins. The team was led by DeMar DeRozan, who became only the fourth Raptor player at the time to make the All-Star game. The next season, the Raptors would improve their franchise number of wins with 49 in a season. At this point, the team seemed to have turned things around with players being recognized for their play such as Lou Williams becoming the first Raptor to ever win the Six Man Award. On February 14th, 2016, the Raptors hosted their first All-Star Game, and in that same season, they would once again set a new franchise record with 56 wins in a season. During the first round of the playoffs, the Raptors defeated the Indiana Pacers in 7 games, winning their first playoff series in 15 years. In the Eastern Conference Final, they faced LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cavs would beat the Raptors in six games and ultimately would go on to win the championship. The following season would bring another trip to the playoffs, with the Raptors beating the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round, but would be defeated for the second year in a row by the Cavaliers in four games. On New Year's Day 2018, DeMar DeRozan scored a team record 52 points in a game. DeRozan became only the third person in team history to score more than 50 points in a game. He would go on to help the Raptors set a new franchise record of season wins with 59. The Raptors faced the Washington Wizards in the first round of the 2018 playoffs, who they would beat in six games. But once more, they were eliminated for the third year in a row by the Cavs, causing every Raptor fan to wonder what would have to happen in order for them to beat LeBron James and the Cavs. Well, they wouldn't have to wait long for an answer because that following year, LeBron left the Eastern Conference to move to Los Angeles and become a Laker. The move might have come as a shock to some, but an even bigger twist awaited. On July 18, 2018, in a shocking trade, DeMar DeRozan and Jakob Pertl were traded to the San Antonio Spurs for Kawhi Leonard and Danny Green. Kawhi Leonard was coming off a right quad injury and had missed most of the 2017-2018 to season. Before the trade, the Spurs and Leonard had disagreements over a timetable for his return. By March of 2018, the Spurs' team doctors felt that Kawhi was fit to play. However, Kawhi sought out second opinions from outside doctors and he refused to play for the rest of the season. The rift between the Spurs and Kawhi never fully healed, so rumors began to circulate that Kawhi had requested a trade and the Spurs eventually ended up trading him to Toronto. With Kawhi's injuries and his pending free agency in the next year, this was potentially a dangerous trade for the Raptors to make, trading away their already established star for an injured star with the hope that he might stick around long enough to help them win a championship. <laughs> well, Kawhi did report and he made his debut with the Raptors in the 2018-2019 season opener against the Cavaliers. The team would finish second place in the Eastern Conference with 58 wins, securing a spot in the playoffs. After narrowly beating the 76ers in the semifinals, thanks to Kawhi Leonard's last second Game 7 winning shot, the Raptors then faced off against the Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals. The Raptors beat the Bucks in six games to clinch their first ever appearance in the NBA Finals. Waiting for them was a championship dynasty team in the Golden State Warriors. This was their fifth consecutive trip to the Finals and they were heavily favored to win. After splitting the first two games at the finals, the Raptors won games three and four to take a commanding three to one series lead. However, in a tightly contested game five, the Warriors managed to win by just one point over the Raptors, 106 to 105, forcing a pivotal game six back in Oakland. 
Three days later, in a back and forth game six, the Raptors closed out the series with a 114 to 110 win, upsetting and defeating the Warriors in six games. They won their first ever franchise championship with Kawhi Leonard being named finals MVP. After 24 seasons and so many near misses, the Toronto Raptors were finally champions of the world. And so that about does it for this super quick history of the Toronto Raptors. What did you think of the DeMar DeRozan trade for Kawhi Leonard? Obviously it was a risky move that paid off for the Raptors, but would you have done anything differently? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, let me know what other sports history topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and feel free to share with anyone else who might also enjoy it. For more interesting stories in sports history, please visit allsportshistory.com. Also, be sure to follow All Sports History on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I've posted the links to those in the description below. And thanks for watching.